I'm hugely bullish about uranium. Uh, and I think that the beginning of the breakout year in uranium will be 2023, the year that we're in. Uh, I think that that will occur because uh, the Japanese nuclear industry is restarting. Mm -hmm. These aren't plants that need to be built. They're plants that are already be built. They need to be turned on. It is an inventory that needs to be bought. It's already owned. It's inventory that won't be sold. Uh, when you talk about a U.S. spot price at $56 uh, up from, depending on when you start, 20 or 50, you don't look at the real price in uranium because increasingly uranium transactions are taking place in the term market, in the contract market, which is opaque. And is it a premium to the spot market? Uh, I would suggest that if the spot market is at U.S. 56, the real price in the uranium market that you're seeing today is 60 or 62. Uh, and that's the main, that's the, the sort of magic point uh, at which the existing uranium producers go from losing money on an all-in basis to making money on an all-in basis. It's also the level at which the higher quality new deposits can be financed into production. It's the catalyst price, if you will. I suspect that the price of uranium goes much higher. I suspect that the price of uranium in real U.S. dollar terms goes to at least $75. But that doesn't happen in 2023. With regards to thorium and with regards to uh, fusion, I think these are technologies that are valid technologies in 20 or 25 years. Right. The thorium question has been around the uranium business for at least 20 years. Thus far, thorium has been efficacious for selling investment newsletters and nothing else. Uh, it has generated a lot of interest, but when you look at the uh, reactors that have been built, hundreds of billions of dollars have been spent on uranium technology, and almost nothing has been spent on thorium technology, which would suggest that so far the um, technology is of use to academics and newsletter editors. Uh, my suspicion is that 20 or 25 years ago, years from now, pardon me, we will see the commercial application of thorium in reactors. I think the net present value of that information to the uranium industry is zero. You're right. Because yeah. cash flow that happens 25 years from now, at any discount rate at all, is worth nothing today. Uh, I don't look to be kind of right. I look to be real right. Uh, I'm not interested in small mines, even small high-grade mines. If I'm going to take the risk inherent in exploration, I want to hit the ball in American parlance way out of the park if I hit it. Yeah. So I want in situ mineral values at today's prices in the U.S. $3 billion range as a minimum. In other words, I want a big target. I want a big deposit. And I want a management team that's been successful before. I have to pay a premium for that, and I'm willing to. Uh, success does not conformably align. <laughs> Uh, there are people who have had 10 successes, uh, but there are a whole bunch more people who haven't had any successes at all. So I, I want to invest with people who have been successful, and I want their success to be directly related to the task at hand. If somebody has made money for me, building, discovering and building gold deposits in Western Australia, and, and all of a sudden they're looking for lithium in Argentina, uh, those successes are very different, uh, and I take a very jaundiced view. If, by contrast, they've been successful building gold mines in Western Australia, and lo and behold, they want to build a gold mine in Western Australia, <laughs> I'm all ears. I, I think right now confidence is high, and so I think that gold is struggling. Uh, for whatever reason, I'm not really sure what the reason is. Uh, maybe it's higher nominal interest rates, which means that more money is going, as an example, into U.S. Uh, treasuries. But when I look just a little bit longer term, gold responds to confidence, and there's a lot around to be unconfident about in the near term. The most important of which is, of course, negative real interest rates. While money is flowing into short-term treasuries, we've talked about the arithmetic before. The benchmark U.S. Treasury is yielding what for? Uh, the Congressional Budget Office suggests that the deterioration of the value of the U.S. dollar in real terms, purchasing terms, is about seven. So they pay you four in a currency where the purchasing power is declining by seven, meaning that you you, you lose 3% a year compounded. If anything ought to diminish confidence, <laughs> it's the fact that the U.S. government absolutely positively guarantees to reduce your wealth by 3% a year compounded for 10 years. The first promise, by the way, that my government has made me that I believe that they will keep. The uh, uh, Another thing that would cause impartial observers concern, uh, and I'm talking about the U.S. dollar's com competitor for gold price right now, is precisely the on-balance sheet liabilities of the United States government. $32 billion. <laughs> trillion, I'm sorry. Trillion. I missed three zeros. Trillion. I missed three zeros. Yeah. That's what happens when you get old. 
uh, and then the on, off balance sheet liabilities of the U.S. government, Medicare, Medicaid, Social Security, another hundred trillion dollars. Uh, it is a truly insane. Uh, the increasing uh, central bank fondness for gold. My suspicion is that central bankers know they're broke and they assume all their peers are broke. Uh, and so they don't want to own each other's paper, particularly when that paper pays a negative real interest rate. <laughs> So they go into gold. And finally, gold's market share is ridiculously low. Uh, in the U.S., we've talked about this before. Uh, the market share of precious metals and precious metals-related assets relative to other savings and investment assets is one half of one percent. The four-decade mean is two percent. Uh, so if negative real interest rates, debt and deficits, quantitative easing, which is really counterfeiting, uh, if all those things are enough to give one concern, Gold doesn't need to win the war against the treasury. It doesn't need to win the war against the Australian dollar. It just needs to lose less badly. If all of those things merely propel gold's market share to the four-decade mean, which is 2% up from half a percent, demand for precious metals quadruples. And that's precisely what I think happens over the next five years. Uh, in truth, uh, if you are a, a natural resource investor, I think it's a conference like unlike any other in the world. First of all, it's been going on for 30 years. It stood the test of time. <laughs> we have great big picture thinkers, but not the kind of big pictures that you'd see big picture thinkers that you'd see on ABC in Australia or NBC in the U.S. The Jim Rickards of the world, the Nomi Princes of the world, the Grant Williams of the world, the Bill Bonners of the world, the Doug Casey's of the world. Great big picture thinkers, but not of the type that you would find in mainstream media. Two, you will have the finest natural resource analysts and portfolio managers in the world. Not people who learned to spell lithium three years ago, but rather people who have been in the business for three or four decades. Importantly, you will have the living legends. These are entrepreneurs who have built multi-billion dollar natural resource companies from scratch. Talking about how the lessons that they learned building million, billion dollar companies have made them better investors and how they can make you a better investor too. Small ebook, big impact, the wealth tree. The only four ways that will make you financially free forever. Download it here for free.